Hey Sag, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're gonna dive right into your reading. Make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe and join the family. I really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for last week's massive success on your reading. I think you guys broke a record for the Sagittarius Collective and I'm very grateful for that. So many new Sagittarius on the channel. I like it. I need more of you guys. I said it last week and I, I mean it. I want more Sag on this channel for sure. I love your magic, your energy. I'm very inspired by it. So yeah, let's dive into the session. I always start by picking the present moment energy so then we can set ourselves up for the best aligned future, the best aligned month ahead, week ahead. Whatever wants to come up is welcome. Okay. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. It is present right here, right now. Two cards. Okay. The Hermit and the Page of Pentacles. So Sagittarius, what comes up first to me is that you've been cultivating something. Um, you've been cultivating inner stillness, which is, hmm, it's interesting that I'm receiving this message right now. You've been cultivating inner stillness, and this is how you're creating magic in your life. Okay, so this is a, a big first message that's coming up for you. Hermit is a card of the present moment always. If ever you see this card in other readings, if you pick it for yourself, the hermit only know, he only knows where his lantern is guiding him, which is the next step ahead. He's not interested in the past anymore. He's not obsessing over what's gonna happen in 10, five plus years, he doesn't care. He is wise. He understands how the only thing that exists is the present moment. And I feel we all know that, but the hermit understands it. That's, that's another level. And again, I feel like this card really is about cultivating our inner stillness, how we, we get to a higher frequency in that way. It's a very personal journey. And what I'm getting is like, what you're doing when you're alone, who are you when no one's watching, who you are when no one's watching, is ready to emerge. There is something very real and authentic about your energy right now in the present moment. That it really wants to emerge for some reason. It's like, it feels like you're ready for something. You're ready for some type of blessing. You're ready to finally enjoy the fruits of your labor and it's interesting how we have the student of the tarot and the teacher of the tarot in one pull and that is just a universal message that there is a teacher in every student and there's a student in every teacher you're never done learning and that is part of the wisdom of the hermit he understands that he is never done learning so Clearly, you've experienced massive growth, massive growth. I felt that, I feel in the past two years, every Sagittarius reading has confirmed to me that Sag is on another level, a higher frequency, and very potent magic about you. And the word magic, I used to be very scared of that word. I used to be almost ashamed of my own magic. And I share that before, and it's, it's a personal story about me, but I think it's important to share it. It's the Sagittarius in my life that were able to shine a light on my own magic and to hold space for all the magical things about me. And there's something here, it's like, now it's your time to receive that. That's why I'm being called to share this. 
again, there's something that you cultivated in, in like inner stillness. And now it's going to shine through for some reason. Oh, yeah, that's it. Look at that. The, the King of Wands. This is like a triple confirmation here. King of Wands is double fire. It's the most massive, the biggest bonfire you can imagine. It's a fire portal. It's a magical energy, probably one of the most magical energy in the tarot. It's like you can think about something and it becomes reality. You can call in something and it finds you almost instantly. The power of your mind, obviously, but here we're talking about your element, fire. We're talking about this arrow that I always go back to when I speak with you guys, but it's true. Like your symbol, this arrow is like, Fire that is so focused, like you know where to direct your energy. You know how to transform and use your energy. And your card in the tarot is the temperance card. It's the alchemist. You are the alchemist. And sometimes you don't even give yourself the credit for how you're able to transform certain things in better ones to transform an ugly situation in something beautiful, to use something to your advantage, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. I think it's a wise thing, a very wise thing to do. So there's a situation here that probably felt like a struggle or a challenge. It could have been... I'm feeling like comparison, like you could have been comparing yourself to other people. Like, why is it so easy for them? Why are they experiencing so much success? And I'm here. I know my magic. I know my power. And I'm struggling to get there. It's taking so much more time. It's because you're getting ready. Again, there was something that you were cultivating just internally in order to get ready for probably the biggest success of your life. And we have the nine of wands here, a build up of fire. Again, there's so much fire here. You're ready for something. You're starting to get very exciting about something, excited, sorry about something. You, can, you might have this goal, this idea, this need. There is something that's pulling you like it's magnetic you just know you're gonna have to do this thing um and i don't know what it is i feel like it could be different for each and every one of you for some of you it could be traveling for others it could be that dream that you always had and you just want to make it happen everything is aligning for you to get whatever you want but the nine of wands is the wounded warrior Again, how are you going to be the alchemist, embody the alchemist that is Sagittarius to transform certain wounds into tools, to transform certain challenges into lessons and make sure that you're not building walls around yourself? Again, I feel like there's something about comparing here. Which I know you understand that you have nothing to envy to other people. You are a friggin' Sagittarius. You can achieve anything that you want. You can get anything that you want. Of course, you need to work hard. It's not that the universe just hands you everything. Uh, you need to work hard, obviously. But I feel like there's comparison like it's been, it's been making it a lot harder for you to trust that you're going to get exactly where you're supposed to go because, again, other people are just getting everything so easily and quickly. There's something about that. Yeah, Ace of Wands, Four of Cups. I don't know what's been happening, but... It feels like there's an injustice in your recent past, or it felt like it was unjust. It, it wasn't fair. 
why is this person getting this thing that I want more than anything? And they don't even seem like they care about it. They don't even need it. And I saw 1010 on the timer as I said that. I think you're about to release so much fear, so much negative thinking, judgments, comparison, and you're ready to just start fresh. Again, we have nine of wands and then the ace of wands. To me, this is a 10 of wands. You're complete with something. But not only are you letting go, you are definitely trying to handle certain feelings differently. And it's kind of hard for me to say what is coming up in this moment. Um, I have a lot of French words coming up, uh, but I'm going to do the best I can. There are certain feelings that you don't want to feel. They're very uncomfortable. They're very hard to maintain and contain and navigate. And it feels like you're able to talk about it now. And as you're talking about them, you're able to have a different perspective. You're able to have a 360 vision of, okay, I understand why I felt that way. I understand where it comes from. This is a cancer card. We are in cancer season and it's very connected to our families, our nest, how we were raised Mother figure, mother figure is so important in cancer season. We are challenged by our idea of our ideas of mother. Um, I've talked about this before. You know, I live in, in Quebec and I, I've always felt like here, the mother figure is always put on a pedestal. So even if you love your mother, even if you have a lovely relationship with her, it's always challenging. So for the folks that have been challenged by their mother figure, by their moms in any way possible, it, it just makes it even harder. And I feel like there's something here, some type of emotional pattern, like a feeling that was never yours. It's like you got it. I'm hearing you got it from your mama. You got it maybe from a mother figure or from certain people in your family. And it made you doubt yourself. It made you kind of, you know, compare yourself to other people. So I don't know what it's about, but I feel like there's a very deep wound here connected to the feminine energy. And you are in the process of healing that. Because you were able to take a step back and again, get a 360 vision. And again, I want to be very careful with what I'm saying because I know not everyone has, you know, of course, problem with their mothers or father figure. But there is something about the nest. There is something about very old stories and beliefs about your family and yourself and how you recreated that for a while but then you got to see that part of yourself and you started cultivating better habits. It's like you realize that you, you had bad examples maybe growing up. It doesn't have to be in your immediate family, but you were maybe influenced by certain people. And now that you're getting older, you're realizing my values aren't aligned with this person anyway. Why was I always trying to make them happy? To prove them that I'm the best, to prove them this and that. I don't care. So what I felt in, the, in this energy of, you know, nine plus one, so ten of wands, you are handling feelings differently. You're not associating anymore with certain feelings about yourself or certain beliefs about yourself. And this is like, you know, your inner reality, this inner stillness and this inner world that you cultivated. Again, when I said, who are you when no one's watching? How do you talk to yourself? What do you practice when you're alone? This inner reality now 
it, it got you on a higher frequency. A higher frequency probably than anyone in your family, anyone that you know. And that can feel very isolating. There might be days where you're like, I don't feel connected to anyone. It's so weird. Am I the problem? No, you are on a higher frequency. At the heart of this reading, there's grief. Five of Cups. At the heart of this reading, at the heart of it all, there is grief there. Grief is this massive rock that we forever carry in our bellies. And I'm getting emotional because I'm just, I'm very passionate about the subject of grief. Um, and when I, I'll share eventually one of my favorite books, it really changed my life, They're very, very small books um, about grief. And I, I just, I'm so passionate about this energy, this feeling that we all experience for many different reasons. And we have to learn throughout our lives to make space for grief at our table. This is what the Five of Cups teaches us. It comes up right before the Six of Cups, which is one of the most healing cards in the tarot. When we accept that grief isn't going anywhere, that it's not that there's something wrong with us, that we feel certain things, we miss certain people. Sometimes we miss people and we grieve folks that we don't even like. We grieve situations and things that we have outgrown. And I, I, sh I shared that so many times, but it's, it's like when I think about the Five of Cups and this huge spectrum of what grief is, I always think about when I left the city and bought, bought my house here in the country, this was like my ultimate dream. This is all I ever wanted. And for a year and a half, I was sitting in my grief. I have goosebumps talking about it because I felt so ungrateful. I felt like I was an idiot. I was like, why am I so hurt right now? Why am I grieving? I was grieving the city. I was grieving my hometown and everyone that I kind of felt like I left behind. And it was very hard for me to appreciate what was right in front of me. But on the five of cups, you see that there are three cups here spilled. The person is looking at those three spill cup. And I always hear tarot readers say, turn around, look at those two cups that are standing. No. I don't want to turn around and look at those two cups. I need to be in the feelings. I need to sit with the feelings, the very, very heavy feelings of loss and grief and so many other, it's not just about that. It's like all the raw feelings that we don't want to feel, but it doesn't make you ungrateful. It doesn't make you crazy. If you're missing someone that was once hurtful to you, it's part of the human experience. So I feel like the Five of Cups is the ultimate like space holder for heavy emotions. It's okay if you don't want to turn around and look at what you have. Sometimes it's necessary to sit with the feelings. And by the way, sitting with the feelings, it doesn't mean that you have to do something about those feelings. Not right now. It's okay. When I see this card, I feel like I'm giving, I'm invited to give myself more compassion. It's okay. It's okay if right now, I don't want to be like super positive. I don't want to be that person that lifts everyone up and be like, look at the positive sides of things. We cannot be like that all the time. And I know Sagittarius, boy, you have so much pressure being the optimistic one of the Zodiac. Uh, to me, it's like, it's, it's too much pressure. I hate when people say that about you. It, it annoys me. I'm like, Sagittarius is a complex and multi-layered human full of heavy feelings and, and you know navigating the human experience like everyone else it's not your job to be the optimistic one to be the happy one in the crowd 
but good for you if it comes easy. Um, and the Ten of Pentacles is here. So this to me is, is, you know, we're really going back to this idea of the nest, of the family, our ancestors. We are complete with something and we are healing our ancestors as we are healing ourselves. And this is something that we have to remember every time that you're able to say no to something that isn't aligned with your values. Every time that you're able to respect and honor your boundaries with your family. Anytime you're doing the hard work, the healing, again, sitting with the feelings, talking about those things, you are healing your lineage. Because our ancestors were killed for their magic. They were uh, blamed for having feelings. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. So every time you're working through those things, you're healing your ancestors. You're healing your lineage. And I know that's like a heavy task, but you're doing it so gracefully. Don't you, don't you underestimate how important you are in your lineage, in your family. Even if they might not make you feel that way. That's the thing. The feelings are valid, but they're not the truth. They're not the truth. So now that we <laughs> had such a heavy talk and, and uh, you know, I know I went deep there, but I think it's so necessary. Five of Cups is a card that we should not overlook ever. It's so profound. It's so important. It's essential to our healing. Now I want to know, after the Ten of Pentacles, after this Ten of Wands, accumulate here that I felt, I want to know what is ready to find Sagittarius. I heard divine miracle and I was like, I'm not going to say that. It sounds so cheesy. And then the ace of cups showed up, which is so divine. This is definitely a confirmation of what I heard. Um, and when I, by the way, I just want to say, when I say I hear things, I see things, I feel things. I'm constantly evolving with all my clairs, you know, Claire Sentin and Claire Audien. There's always different things showing up for me and I'm still learning and navigating my gifts. So I just want to say, I know sometimes it sounds a little woo woo when I say I heard this, but this is how I experienced it. So I'm just being super real with you. Ace of Cups, this, this divine, gift it feels so destined it feels like you're so ready to say yes to it um the little drops here that you see are are called yods and they mean god it's like everything feels aligned for you in this moment and i think it's directly connected to you again healing your lineage and healing yourself and noticing that, understanding that. Again, with the hermit, we understand what we already knew. And with the page of pentacles, again, we're constantly learning and getting more information. So this exploration of yourself, it's just the beginning. This is what the Ace of Cups feels like. Because the Ace of Cups is the entry point of, of feelings, of new feelings. So... You're seeing the world differently. You're seeing yourself differently. And I feel like every day it expands. It gets, your frequency it gets higher and higher and higher and higher every day. So what is the Ace of Cups containing? I want to know what is the Ace of Cups containing? Nine of Pentacles, abundance in all forms, enjoying the fruits of your labor, finally. And the Five of Cups, interesting. King of Cups also is here. So 
it's interesting how I said, yeah, your frequency is getting higher and higher constantly, but you're always learning. You're always learning. And as long as you are learning, you're not failing. So what I'm getting here with this nine of pentacles and the five of pentacles, there's going to be this moment and probably a few times in the next few weeks during cancer season where you're going to feel like you're taking steps back and you're going to ask yourself, okay, I, I feel like I took 10 steps, 10 steps forward and then now I'm taking 20 steps back. Why was I feeling so confident yesterday and now I feel like I'm a failure or I, I'm scared of missing something? I'm scared that I'm not going to be enough. I'm not going to be good enough. There's a calling here that you have to try something, to create something, to share something with the world maybe. And doubt and fear will creep up once in a while. And I think that this is just a confirmation that you're on the right track. Your nervous system is going to get activated. It's going to get pissed at you. Your ego, you're going to be challenged in so many ways. Again, you could be comparing yourself to others. Why do I have less than people that don't deserve it? Which it feels so unfair. It feels so unfair. I'm sure you all have examples of like, people that were hurtful to you or people that you consider like bad, quote unquote, and they're thriving. They look like they're thriving. And it's very unfair when you feel like you're living in accordance to your value and you're a good person and you're struggling. I'm not saying you're struggling, but I'm saying that there's the fear of that that creeps up a lot for you. It's okay. It's a highly emotional season astrologically and clearly in your life and it's okay it's part of this growth and the nine of pentacles is the embodiment of dedication how dedicated are you to keep on cultivating this inner reality this inner world this inner stillness remember the inner stillness you're cultivating that's what creates magic it's the dedication. It's constantly showing up for yourself. It's constantly addressing the difficult feelings. It's not external. It's internal for you. So I want, I feel like there's a clear message that I did not tap into yet that wants to come up for you. So I'm going to honor that. Give me three cards. Give me three cards. Hmm. Okay, Tower, Knight of Swords. You're being prepared right now. Six of Cups, yeah. Of course the Six of Cups is showing up. I told you, this is the Five of Cups, everything we talked about connected to grief. It's all leading you to a deeper space of healing moving, flowing so much more easily, gracefully, navigating all the feelings, um, the power of flowing instead of forcing. Very Cancerian, again, as we are in Cancer season. I saw the Knight of Swords in the Tower here with the Six of, of Cups, and it's like you're being prepared for a substantial upgrade. You're being prepared for something. So again, I feel like there's a lot of back and forth in your feelings and energy during cancer season. You're like, some days I feel like I'm on top of the world, on top of my craft. I can do it all. I feel so energized. I feel like the freaking king of wands. I can get anything I want. And then the next day you're like, why did I made so many plans? And why did I promised myself certain things? Uh... I don't know. It, it's scary. You're pushing through fear constantly. This is also something that you're cultivating right now. Again, are you able to say no? Are you able to embody your boundaries? Are you able to move um, 
in accordance to not only your values, but your truth, the truth of who you are, what you believe in, the things that are good for you and the things that aren't. It's like you're seeing through everyone's bullshit right now. It feels like you have like x-ray glasses that just sees through everyone's bullshit and you don't want any of it. You're protecting yourself. You're clearing out everything that is non-essential out of your life. And the tower card, I, I, this is, I feel like it's one of my mission as a tarot reader to help people understand how much of a blessing the tower is. The tower is connected to the crown chakra. You know, there's a crown here. There's this implosion. It's not something that will happen to you. It's something that's happening for you. And it is internal. A breaking point. When we... A breaking point and also a breakthrough of some sort. And... It's our connection to the divine. It's when we ha we cultivated like so much wisdom. We gained so much wisdom that we cannot unsee and unlearn what we know. And sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable to know the truth about someone, to find out someone's true colors. It can bring up so much fear and so much doubt and so much pain. But this is happening for your greater good. So there could be something that is just kind of shining a light on people's toxicity, on people's lies. And uh, I'm hearing abuse also. Maybe ab abusing or <sighs> abusing of someone's kindness, uh, someone's generosity, someone's vulnerability. There's something here and it's like, you're seeing people's bullshit. Again, there's like this x-ray vision and you see clearly how certain people don't have your best interests at heart. Or maybe someone that you love or someone around you is going through a lot. And I think that, again, this is all preparing you. You're being prepared for a substantial energy upgrade like a huge huge upgrade and yeah it's possible it's possible to get even higher and more powerful it really is and i think you are the perfect example of that the end of a tough cycle approaches and prosperity lies ahead prosperity in all forms abundance in all forms I love that we have double earth energy here for you, Capricorn and Taurus. Again, your values, your foundations, your ancestors, um, so much healing, so much growth, but it's not easy. That's the thing. It sounds very cute when we talk about healing in the spiritual world, but it's messy. It can be uncomfortable. It can be so challenging. But whatever you are challenged by right now or whatever you've been challenged by in the past few years, it was all preparing you for this massive expansion. You already started. You already initiated and started flowing with all of those change. Um, the bigger message here is to not underestimate again how cultivating your inner stillness and your inner world, who you are when no one's watching, how do you treat yourself, how do you judge yourself, how do you judge others, to really keep on cultivating this inner world because it's about to shine through. And however you, you know, expand internally, it will eventually match up in the external and I think that you feel that intuitively and that was just like a triple quadruple confirmation of what I'm sensing for you so thank you for being here Sagittarius I feel like that was like a crazy roller coaster ride of emotions and if you watch till the end I just want to say thank you so much
it means the world to me that I found people that have the same respect for the tarot that I have. And also I feel so respected and welcome in this, in your energy when people watch until the end. Tarot should not be rushed. Messages should not be rushed. The tarot is not here to feed your ego. It's here as a mirror, a sacred, magical mirror to help you see things more clearly, to help you explore certain feelings. Um, so thank you for your respect. And I'll talk to you guys very, very soon.